Today we're going to talk about uh, how to calculate molecular formulas. Now that part is new, we're also going to review how to calculate empirical formulas because that's part of calculating molecular formulas. We've already done that, so we'll go a little bit faster. Uh, so, and hopefully you still have your notes uh, from when we did empirical formulas. So, why are we doing all this? Why are we keep ch changing things to moles? I want to emphasize a couple things. Um, all these things are equal really in three ways. They're equal because they have the same number of particles, they're all a mole, and their mass be equal for the periodic table. But what is different, and that's also illustrated here, is their masses. Atoms weigh differently. This is mercury. It weighs, it's heavier than any of these other atoms. This is iron. It weighs, iron has a different mass. Iron has a mass of 55.85. And this is sulfur, and sulfur has a mass of about 32 grams, and that's for a mole. This is iodine. Each one of these is, has a different mass. Let's say you want, did not want to waste any chemical, and you wanted to mass, uh, react one, one uh, gram of iron with one gram of sulfur. You would waste a great deal of chemical because that's not the right ratio. How do you get the right ratio? You change them to moles. And that's why we're doing all this, because atoms, particles have different masses, and we change them to moles, you're going to get a ratio, and we know those ratios, what will react and what will be left over and what's used. So that's why we're changing the moles, and that's why it's so important. So let's keep that in mind as we're doing these problems. Let's start our first problem. Okay. Once again, this is a review. You should already have this in your notes. This is how to solve empirical formula problems. You assume a mass. If one's not given, they may be in percentages. If they're in percentages, it's easiest just to assume a mass of 100 grams. Uh, but you could have any kind of masses. Second step is change grams to moles. Second, uh, third step is to divide each number of moles by the smallest number of moles. And the last, if they're not, if all the numbers of moles are not in a whole number, what you need to do is multiply something to make a whole number. And then I have some examples of things of numbers that you'd multiply by. So let's do our first a quick empirical formula problem for review. Determine the empirical formula of a compound that's 25.9 grams of nitrogen and 74.1 grams of oxygen. Now notice here, these are not percentages. We're going to go straight from these masses. So the first step is to change grams to moles. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is put in our grams, 25.9 uh, grams of nitrogen divide that by the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14. We know nitrogen is diatomic. That's not going to be 28 here. We're not going to use N2 because this is nitrogen in a compound. It's not nitrogen by itself. And we're going to put at the top, of course, one mole. So there goes our one mole. And we see grams of nitrogen cancels out. Beautiful. I love to see when things cancel out in these problems. It works so awesomely. So 25.9 divided by 14 gives us a whopping total of 1.85 moles of nitrogen. All right, now we need to do the other compound or the other element in this compound, and that is 74.1 grams of oxygen. I hope everyone by now knows how to change grams of oxygen to moles. We're going to put, uh, make a, a factor label, and at the bottom you should put 16 grams of oxygen, and at the top we'll put one mole of oxygen. You're going to see, of course, beautiful, that's excellent, grams of oxygen cancel, we end up with moles of oxygen. Now, what's the next step? Hopefully you remember. Divide each number of moles by what number? If you said 1.85, you are correct. You divide them each by the smallest number of moles, and that would give us one mole of nitrogen. And then 4.63 divided by 1.85 gives us 2.5 moles of oxygen. These are not whole numbers. So both of these numbers should be multiplied by what number? Hopefully you said 2. So the next step is we can't have a, a empirical formula that's N1 O2.5. You have to have whole numbers as subscripts. So we're going to multiply both those by uh, numbers such that would give us a whole number, and that number should be 2. And so your final answer for this should, should be N205. I know I went rather quickly on that, but that was simply a review of how to do empirical formula, which we've done before. We're going to be doing a lot of these. So next, let, now let's talk about how to do molecular formulas. Let's talk about them briefly for a second. We've, we've done some stuff with molecular formulas. We've just not calculated one before. The empirical formula indicates the simplest or smallest ratio of atoms in the compound. However, it doesn't tell you the actual numbers of atoms in the compound. For example, we all, we've all know hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. 
is HO is an empirical formula. That doesn't tell us a lot about it. For another example is glucose has a molecular form of C6H12O6. Its empirical form is CH2O. There are a lot of things with that same formula. So uh, we want to be a little bit more specific and molecular formulas allow us to do that. Okay. Uh, the empirical formula of CH2O could be that of several compounds. It could be C2H4O2. It could be C3H6O3. It could be C100H200O100. So it's important to know the exact numbers of atoms in the compounds because they have different properties. Um, for example, we know uh, glucose, C6H12O6, is a monosaccharide, but sucrose, that's a type of sugar that if you put sugar in coffee or whatever and you actually put the natural sugar, that's a disaccharide. So those have different properties. Uh, molecular formula. Molecular formula is always the simplest whole number ratio of the empirical formula. Uh, so in order to calculate the molecular formula, you must have two pieces of information. So these are the two things. Number one, empirical formula. Number two, you need the molar mass of the molecular formula. So that part must be given. So these are the two items you need. So let's go do our first problem. Uh, so this is simply review. So those are our two items. Next one. Calculating molecular formulas. Find the molecular formula for a compound that contains 56.36 grams of oxygen and 54.6 grams of phosphorus if the molar mass of the compound is 189.5 grams per mole. So first, same step of what we were doing before, find the empirical formula, then find the molar mass of the empirical formula, and last, find the ratio of the two molar masses. So those are our three steps. So find the empirical formula. That's what we've always done before. Find the molar mass of the empirical formula. That's new. And so I'm going to put an asterisk here because this one's new. And then the last one, find the ratio of the two molar masses of the molecular formula divided by the empirical formula. That's new. So that's our new step. So here's our, here's our first problem. Uh, find the empirical formula of... If you have 56.36 grams of oxygen, and we're going to change grams of oxygen to, you got it right, moles, so we'll divide by 16. And we know there's one mole of oxygen has a mass of 16 grams. Excellent. So we're going to divide those out. Grams of oxygen cancel. That's beautiful. So those cancel, and we get a total of 3.5 moles of oxygen. Now let's do our other element, and that is phosphorus. We're going to change grams to moles again, so we'll divide by the molar mass of phosphorus. And we know the molar mass of phosphorus is 31, and we'll put one mole at the top and divide those out. This is a part that's beautiful. Here it comes. Watch out. Grams of phosphorus is gone. Now you have moles of phosphorus. And our answer gives us 1.8 moles of phosphorus. I think you guys know this next step is to do divide both these by the smallest number of moles, which is 1.8. We'll do that. And 1.8. And that gives us two oxygens, and this one gives us one. Now, uh, this is going to be nice because this step right here, we've eliminated the step where you need to multiply by a number to make them whole numbers because, luckily, these were already whole numbers. So our empirical formula is PO2. So our empirical formula is PO2. Yay, hurrah. That's PO2. Now, that's... Now remember the two new things you need to do. One is find the molar mass of the empirical formula. So let's do that. Find the molar mass of the empirical formula. So you need the mass of one phosphorus, two oxygens. Grab your calculator, get going. So the molar mass of one phosphorus is 31. And two oxygens, 16 times 2 is 32. So basically you're going to add together the number 32 and 31. I think you can do it in your head without the calculator. And that's going to be 63 grams in a mole, or grams per mole is molar mass. Now we want to compare that to the molar mass of the uh, molecular formula. And the molar mass of the molecular formula is 189.5. This is a given value. Uh, you have to be given this to do the problem. And then you're going to divide those out. And notice these are not the same. If, we had, if the molecular formula could have a molar mass of 63, that would tell us a molar molecular formula and the empirical formula are exactly the same. But since they're not the same, that's going to tell us it's some whole number ratio. We need to divide those out and we get the answer. So that's our given value, the 189.5 is given in the problem. 
That's our calculated value from doing our empirical formula problem and then finding the molar mass of the empirical formula. So you divide those out and we get a grand total of three. So now instead of having PO2, we should have PO3. So this is three times that of the empirical formula. Uh, so molecular formula is three times heavier than the empirical formula. Therefore, the molecular formula has three times more atoms than the molecular formula. And the new formula, this is a molecular formula, is P3O6. And that's it. This is how you do molecular formula problems. Good luck.